Oh, it's recording. Good. I see All that. Right. All right. So um, welcome, everybody. Welcome to First Friday for the month of September. Yay, yeah. <laughs> 2020, September of 2020. We're almost through the end of this year. Uh, I'm James Holmes. What a year it's been. <laughs> I'm James Holmes, jamesholmesstudio.com. And with me here is Grace Noel. And uh, Grace, do you want to start off by maybe just uh, talking a little bit about your path uh, towards your art life? And then we want to mention to everyone right off the top that you're in your studio, I'm in my studio. People might come down. Hopefully people come in to see you or look at your art. So if we get interrupted, we're not going to worry too much about those kinds of details if it shows up in the video. Yeah, that sounds good, James. Thank you so much for um, inviting me to this opportunity to have this artist talk with you. Um, James approached me about it like yesterday. Today's uh, Monday is when we're doing the filming. Monday, August 31st is when we're doing the filming. And then um, James came by my studio yesterday and um, gave approached me with this idea. And I said, yes, let's do that. Um, I always think artist talks and interviews are really a great way to get to know artists. And during this um, virtual and digital time, this is really um, a way to like even archive those talks and experiences uh, and get to share them with a huge, large audience, as I like to say. Um, that, uh, yeah, so then my name is Grace Noel. I'm a mixed media fine artist, installation artist, muralist, and um, I'm the owner of Grace Noel Art LLC, which I operate out of the Denver Art Society here at 734, 734 Santa Fe Drive in the underground studios. And um, yeah, James, did, did I miss anything? Is there anything you'd like me to add to that? No, no not at all. And we'll get a little bit more into the detail as we, uh, as we get going here. We're gonna spend, just so you guys know, about 10 minutes together, um, just give you guys a little bit of an idea of kind of what we're doing and maybe talk a little bit about even how we've adapted to this new COVID environment, which is new for all of us and certainly has hit the artist community pretty, um, you know, pretty heavily. Um, my studio is located literally across the street from Grace's. I'm at 747 Santa Fe and the artist on Santa Fe, second story studios um, and been here, I guess since about, I guess November, the end of November, I think is when I moved in here, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so Grace, maybe uh, first off, one of the things I want to compliment you on and ask you to talk about a little bit is just your business acumen. I'll never forget coming by your studio to visit you and you, you paused yourself off your computer. So I was in the middle of my business meeting with yourself, which I thought was awesome that you actually go through a, a structured business process. And, and I can tell by just observation, by the way we've interacted when I've acquired work from you, that you really do treat your art practice as a serious business. And I'd love for you to talk a little bit about maybe some of the tenets of, of how your practice uh, has unfolded along those lines. Oh, well, I appreciate that, James. That means a lot to me because um, I absolutely value and respect where you come from as a professional as well and as an artist. So um, uh, that I really developed that business uh, side of my art um, as I graduated from college because that really wasn't part of my degree. And I even talked to graduates from like as early as like, you know, last year or 2015 um, between then, and they did not receive the same level of um, business uh, sort of knowledge either. So it's something that's uh, been, it's more of like a firsthand experience that artists need to um, develop as they grow their professional dream and creative dreams. Um, I have to say that I really acquired a lot of that knowledge and info from the, being part of professional organizations like the art district on Santa Fe. Yeah. So, and even I was part of it via like galleries. So um, it's more like just getting involved in other businesses that are doing art as a business, i.e. the Denver Art Society Gallery or the art district on Santa Fe those organizations come with networks which come with um, professionals that are willing to um, either share their knowledge for pro bono, do seminars, talks, ticketed, or um, then also they have like workshops that they offer. Um, I got looped into a um, beta program for marketing which was like 
um, a lot, it was a reduced rate as since it was a beta program as opposed to like the full on program. So I just learned a lot. And I always just like to have a habit of seeking that stuff out now because of how much it helps to my, my art practice. So, um, yeah, thanks for saying that. Well, I know you're also a giver because I um, know that you, in terms of giving back, it was interesting in terms of you having gleaned some of that from your association. And then you recently just finished a series of free courses through the month of, was it, uh, was, was it July or August that you did your series of uh, um, business classes, like four, four weeks, four Mondays? Um, yeah, it was in July. Uh, um, it's, uh, it was in celebration of having my studio for um, six years here in the underground of the Denver Art Society since actually I was I've been a member for seven years and working in the art district for seven years but um, helped build the studios in the underground so I've been here since day one with these studios. That's great. Well talk a little bit about your series. So I'm always intrigued, one of the things that intrigues me about the way you work is that you work in series. And that's something that in my own art practice, I'm just starting to begin to, um, you know, try to incorporate that into my own practice of developing art so that, you know, I, I tend to paint a painting and I'll paint a painting the next week and it looks nothing at all. I was nothing to do in relationship with each other. And I, I can see the value of di discipline of working through a series. So can you talk a little bit about that and the one you're working on now? Oh, thank you. Um, yes, I, uh, you know, it's something that I, when, as I've developed, because in art school, I was more like one piece at a time, let's try these different processes, yeah. as opposed to really building a series. Um, but as my portfolio and graduating from college required that I had like a, a consistent theme, at least. So then once I was graduated and I moved into being in the arts, um, like growing my professional career as an artist, I w decided, all right, let's pick a color palette and go with that theme. And then um, more so like what is the underlying inspiration for, every, for the piece that I'm making and how does that all connect together to, through my other interests and inspirations. And um, truly it's been that I express what I'm passionate about, I guess, <laughs> um, and what I'm interested in. And like I said, my inspiration and interest. So um, that bridges the, um, the theme to the visuals that I'm creating. And so I basically just like want to dive into something and then see what it looks like from all the angles. And um, that's where I create that series from. Um, my most current series is the Chinese Zodiac Five Element series, which is based on the Chinese Zodiac Four Element series. Um, the Four Element series really was a uh, it's a continuation of my first series, which is the Sunshine Collection, mm -hmm. um, which is like depicted on my shirt here. Mm -hmm. um, this, this rainbow palette was designed uh, based on the four elements of our natural world, since the Sunshine Collection is a, all about having fun outside in the sunshine. So I'm bridging the natural elements of fire, earth, wind, and water, which are, you know, red for fire, earth for, or green for earth, yellow for wind, and then um, blue for water, which is essentially a rainbow palette, and um, blending those into, or depicting those through my style to create uh, an experience of what it is to actually feel those while being outside in the sunshine. So um, that's called the Sunshine Collection. In continuation of that is the, four the Chinese Zodiac Four Elements series, which then is also based on the lunar calendar. So then there's the sun and moon, and then ultimately my art and what I'm always fascinated uh, with is just being connected to my world, the physical earth world, <laughs> and yeah, then also yeah. the big picture. So like the stars and just truly how magical it really all is to be alive on planet earth, or I say spaceship earth, because um, in reality, this is the best spaceship we could ever create or have um, that we are always as a human race creating new spacecraft to go explore the big picture yeah. but 
um, we can only exist that way for so long before it will destroy our fragile bodies in that way. So That's right. this is uh, really just showing appreciation for the um, for daily life and also that gratitude for um, the experience of life. That's great. Well, your yeah. series is wonderful. Congratulations on the Oh, thank you, James. You're not, not complete yet, but you're making your way through. <laughs> Well, and I like a subject too that I can um, continue to pull from. So it's something that I feel in my heart and I'm going to continue to feel that way as I live my life. So it's, I can continue to create something that's in that uh, style and it, in that same vein and experience. So um, I would like to then, you know, ask you a question too, since this uh, interview is going to go both ways. Yes. <laughs> um, I did want to bring up, um, you know, in, in that sense of gratitude and also um, like, and also just being really impressed with what you do as an artist. Um, I know that you have many hobbies, but in addition, you are an executive director of a nonprofit. You're on the board of directors for the art museum for almost 20 years now. Yep. And um, then you're on the board of directors for the art district on Santa Fe plus a dad, <laughs> plus you ride horses, plus you ride bicycles. You do so, so much. And then in addition, you're this wonderful, amazing artist. So, um, and so then how really, I mean, uh, in all of that, do you still find the time for then creating your own art and your inspiration if you're so busy with all those things you're still creating like where does that inspiration come from for you yeah i, I like to say grace that i um paint from the inside out and when i talk about that as a as an idea um what it really means is that everything in my life so the things you've talked about you know my passion for my horses my a passion for my work at cherokee ranch and castle foundation um, you know, conversations I have with my two daughters uh, or engagement in conversation with my wife or time I spend with friends, you know, being inspired by other art I see, um, you know, all those things I think is where my inspiration flows from. When I uh, come into my studio uh, and really to initiate my art practice, you know, I go through this uh, initial process of just piddling around the studio for a while. I never come in and like get right to it because I'm usually coming back most often from a day at work or from dealing like in this COVID environment with issues that, have, that come up around that. And so I think just kind of, you know, straightening out my studio or going through and looking at my work from the last time I was here um, or, you know, pricing work or whatever it is, just kind of being in the space helps me to create a separation between whatever it was I was doing before and kind of the moment. And what that usually will do is inform a mood, which then I always paint to music. So, you know, whatever that mood I resolve to then drives the choice of what I'm going to pull up in terms of my music in the studio for the particular painting session. And then that music, of course, then influences just the way my flow goes. Um, I paint everything. I mean, I, if you come in here what I'm painting, it might be anything from like a Bach piano concerto to uh, Pearl Jam or to the Rolling Stones, Gary Clark Jr. I mean, I like all kinds of music. And so, you know, the influences are all based on kind of mood of the moment, which tracks back to what's inspired me as I'm piddling around the studio. So then when I take all that to the canvas, that is where the inspiration comes from, uh, because it's really then what's inside my heart and what is it that I'm communicating as I put the work forward. Interesting thing I learned in my practice when I've either done a commission or like I just finished a painting that I delivered yesterday uh, for a show down at Spark Gallery, when I'm painting for an outcome, like I, I, I wanna make sure I don't disappoint my inviter or that the work is good enough to be in the show, or if it's a commission that I'm trying to satisfy the person that's you know, asked me to do a certain type of work, it always is different than when I just come in and just open up my heart and just paint. And, and it's one of the things that I've learned the most from is in those moments where I'm doing a commission or painting for a purpose uh, because it, it forces me to grow because uh, I paint myself into corners when I do that. When I'm here just painting to paint, um, it just flows out and then I look back at it the next day and say, okay, what is it that 
was created. I call it meeting the painting in the morning. And um, mm. so, so Grace, all those things that you mentioned are what fuel my creative life. Yeah, and it also just seems like you're even energized by making art. So that's like, it's your, it's even, it's not like some other thing you need to go do. It's something that when you're go, you go in there and uh, in your studio or you are around other artists or experiencing the art that other mus that musicians or other artists have created, that that's really actually there to give you the ability to continue all of these amazing things that you do. <laughs> um, and so I'm wondering if, you know, that's why you take on the extra roles and responsibilities of being a leader in the arts and um, like in through board member positions and just be, being both ends, essentially. You're like on the back end and the front end. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. and I do. And, and I do think it's part of that is I feel this um, enormous sense of gratitude around, around life in general. I mean, some of the things you've expressed a little bit earlier about just the privilege of being on this spinning spaceship we call Earth. Um, I, I appreciate that. And so I want to give as much as I can just in my day-to-day -day life. I want to, you know, whether it's, um, you know, at my job, my full-time job, engaged at the art museum, you know, developing friendships with other artists. I try, I try to be someone that does try to give, whether that's, um, you know, encouragement. Uh, with artists, oftentimes it's, you know, supporting their work, you know, buying their paintings and uh, attending their shows. And the energy exchange uh, for me is my energy level increases when I'm ever doing something that is creative. Like even just from the time I came to my studio and we're sitting here having our conversation, I can feel my energy level, um, you know, it, 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 it's and, and that, and when I come down here on a, on a weekend, you know, um, and I paint for a while and I, you know, go and look at a show down the street or pop into a gallery or come over and see you or walk through recreative, um, th that's all just feeding my energy. I mean, usually, by the time I leave here on a Saturday, I just am just in the best place from a, a energy perspective because just the creativity just, just it fuels that inside of me. So you, you've, you've pegged me right on that one. <laughs> well, that's, that's great. And I think that that is, um, you know, like you're a poster child for the arts and the value that the arts bring to, um, you know, an individual, but also then the community, because then you're going out there and doing, making a lot of change as an individual that affects so many people. And um, that that is, you know, if there wasn't an art district and if the arts weren't supported by, you know, yourself, by myself, by other artists, by uh, patrons and art buyers, that um, that that would be lacking and missing in our experience. So that really shows to me um, the true value of art and that it's energizing and um, the creativity and the creative mind um, can be developed and um, expressed. So that's beautifully said. Thank you for that. Thank you. And um, before we go, why don't we uh, each uh, provide uh, how People can find us. Why don't you tell us about your website and your uh, identities on social media. I'll do the same and then we'll say goodbye and let everyone get on to the next uh, step in uh, First Friday tonight. That's a, a that sounds great. Thanks, James. Yeah, so um, pretty much everything uh, with my my online presence will be Grace Noel Art or Grace Noel dot Art. Um, so my website is Grace Noel dot Art. Um, last name spelled N O E L, just like Christmas. Uh, and then on Instagram, I'm Grace Noel dot Art as well. Facebook, I'm Grace Noel Art, and on YouTube, I'm also Grace Noel Art. Um, have a Patreon, have Twitter as well. So just look around for Grace Noel Art. Um, all of it, of course, is linked to my website and my social media accounts. So um, you can find me through one way or another. Then, of course, as I said, I have my studio here in the Art District on Santa Fe at 734 Santa Fe Drive in the Denver Art Society Underground Studios where I try to be Thursday through Monday. I uh, take Tuesday to be um, like my home chore day. And then um, Wednesday, I've been working at Spectra Art Space. So um, yeah, James, how about you? Yeah, you can find me on Facebook uh, at James Home Studio. 
uh, Instagram at James Holmes Studio, and my website is at jamesholmesstudio.com. Uh, Grace, thank you for doing this. It's been a lot of fun. And, uh, it's been a pleasure, James. Thank you so much. All right. Wish you all uh, blessings. And would you like to sign us off the way you do so well? <laughs> yes. Um, I think that we both could agree that we are all made out of sunshine. Sunshine makes the plants grow, the water flow, and the wind blow. And so now and every day is an opportunity to go on a magical journey through the rainbow. <laughs>